Um, I'm Magaira Vendani. Today we are sitting with Grant Neida. Uh, he is the he is the CIO for Effectus Capital. Uh, this is an investment house focused on innovation. Um, can you please take us through the tagline? Innovation and great companies are inseparable. Yes, thanks, Brendani. We we spend a lot of time at Effectus looking at innovation, and the reason is that our experience has shown us that typically when you find great companies, you find innovation, and when you find great innovation over sustained periods of time, mm. you invariably find great companies. Okay, great. Is it is it is innovation uh, a new phenomenon? So no, Brendani, innovation is absolutely it's not new. But it's become of critical importance, in our opinion, because we're sitting in this, let's call it the exponential age. We've got this convergence of numerous new, interesting, exciting technologies, but happening across uh, multiple uh, platforms, across multiple landscapes, be it life sciences, be it biotechnology, be it pure technology, artificial intelligence. These things are all converging at the same time. And in the past, when you've seen these multi-technology convergences, we've had these industrial revolutions. Mm. And we're currently moving through another one of these kind of industrial revolutions. But what is even more unique at, the, at this point in time is the, the rate of change is exponential. It is faster than we've seen at any other point in history. Um, and it has opened the door to so many new opportunities, so many new, there's so many new tool kits, if you like, or uh, mechanisms by which innovation can take place, which is opportunity, but at the same time it also poses threats, it poses disruption, and it poses challenges. So it's, a, it's an incredible opportunity and it's an incredible threat, and we believe it's critical as part of the investment process to, to be cognizant of what's happening in the world right now. Interesting. So that explains why the focus on innovation at Effectus. Um, and, and the follow-up question would be, what are some of these tools that, 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 that are innovative tools or innovation tools? Thank you. Yeah, so I just first, firstly want to highlight the point that innovation is not new. Innovation has been around for as long as mankind has been around, in one form or another. Mm. You had Henry Ford who, who had a phenomenal innovation with the production line, with the Model T. Mm. That wasn't really pure technology. He changed process. He changed the way something was done. They built the cars faster, cheaper, and better. Uh, there was increased productivity, increased wages, increased profitability, and prices came down. So it was a win-win for all. Now that's a, an obvious and a fantastic example of innovation. But where we are today, if you move into the modern age, the tools have changed, but the thinking is the same. Okay. If you look at the world now, we have big data, artificial intelligence, cloud computing, and software. Now, what has changed is that we've always been data intensive species mm -hmm. there's always data around mm -hmm. but it's always been unstructured and inaccessible in many ways what's changed now is the the technology is such that we are capturing much of the data we are generating mm -hmm. uh, be it on the online or be it uh, through our computers mm -hmm. or be it through sensors microchips etc the information is now accessible it's being stored in a place that it can be accessed on the cloud mm -hmm. and we're able to mine the data more efficiently through machine learning and artificial intelligence and extract insights from it yeah. so this this is a, a phenomenal opportunity but once again this is available to all companies so it is not a unique edge or a unique advantage to any one company mm. the companies that embrace this mm. and use it to their advantage better than the peer group mm. they will be the leaders the ones that use it to innovate but the ones that are slow to pick it up, mm. the ones that are waiting to follow, mm. those are the ones that are going to lose. Those are the ones you don't want to invest in, the ones that will fall behind. And that's just one simple example, but it's one of the biggest trends and the biggest changes we're seeing right now. That leads me to, to my next question, Grant, which is how, how do you guys assess innovation at Effectus? How do you guys go about it? Because there's, there's so many technologies. Mm. How do you guys sift through and, and, and find winners from that space? Yeah, that's a great question. So we have developed our own internal uh, disruption framework that we look at. It's called the Innovation, Technology and Disruption Framework. We look at every company through the lens of their ability to innovate, okay. their ability to embrace the technologies that are available and becoming available, okay. and the ability to use these to either face the threat of disruption or themselves become a disruptor. 
uh, and, and those that, are, that score highly in this framework mm. have a history of success and are the ones that we believe will sustain this, the, the, the kind of growth mm. and the kind of success that we're looking for as an investable company. Interesting, very interesting, Grant. Now, you guys use the ITD framework. Are you looking at the product of the company? Is, is innovation in some way in line with the product line? So it's a, it's a very good question. And many times people assume innovation is product and product is innovation. And yes, it is, absolutely. But product is actually one of the weakest forms of innovation because it is the easiest to copy. Okay. You only have to think of Apple when they came out with the iPhone. It was within, the, by two, 2007, they came out with the iPhone. By 2008, there was Android phones, there was Samsungs and there's Huawei. So, so the actual product itself, easy to copy. Tesla with the electric vehicles, there's any number of electric vehicle competitors right now. Mm. So it's great. Yeah. The companies that are good companies can innovate with product, but that doesn't sustain your advantage. What you need to do, what we believe, is you need to look far deeper into the organization. And innovation actually runs end to end through a company. You find it in the process, in the operations. Okay. It can be how the factory is put together. Mm. If you take a Tesla as an example, mm. They've completely reinvented the way they produce cars. Mm. Um, they see the entire factory as one machine. And, and they've incorporated things like 3D printing into it. Um, they're using, you know, you use uh, sensors to determine the efficiency. There's robotic process autom automation possibilities. So in, in any number of levels in your processes of production and output, there are the ability to do things differently, to do things better, and to do things in a way that your peer group hasn't thought of yet. And, and a company like Tesla was a good example of that in the production process. It also goes beyond that, it goes into your HR processes. You know, as humans, as companies, as we move more and more toward technology, mm -hmm. software, um, you know, it's a, it's a people-driven industry, a people-driven world, more about services. Your, your most important resource source is your staff. So, you know, the insights you can gather from your staff to improve productivity, mm. to improve retention, wellness, these are things that make great businesses. Mm. These are things that keep your key asset, mm. if you're a labor-intensive business, mm. happy. And so there's innovations there that are happening as well. Mm. And then, of course, there's the obvious innovation which happens on the product level, but in and around the product, it's critical as to how you innovate in terms of getting the product to market, how do you develop the brand, or you, how do you use social media? How do you use um, the route to market? Mm. You know, Apple came through with an iStore. People were moving offline. They were going on to online sales. They were going away from bricks and mortar and, mm. and Apple came out with the iStore. That was an innovation. Okay. Tesla has bypassed the traditional auto dealership. They've mm. gone mm. direct to consumer. Yeah, yeah. You know, so th there's any number of ways to innovate, to build a brand, to build a consumer experience to build an ecosystem, to build the loyalty, and that's what ultimately creates longevity because products are very easily copyable and are very quick to be copied. If you think, it's just another great example is Facebook mm. did not invent social media. Mm. I don't know if you've heard mm. of the company MySpace. They were the original in the space. Google did not invent search. It was actually Yahoo. Okay. So yeah. these guys looked at these products and these services that were being offered. They weren't the first to come up with them but they came back with a better way to do it yeah. and a better route to market and a better output and efficiency. And those are the dominant players in the industry to this day. So it's a very interesting and dynamic space to be looking at. Very interesting. This is, this is very interesting, Grant. Now, we're sitting in South Africa, Grant, and we're talking about all these gigantic technologies that we're seeing being implemented all over the world. What is your ITD telling you about South Africa? Do we have innovative companies here? We often sit in South Africa and feel that there's no innovation, we have no technology, um, everything's happening globally outside of us. But I think that's a, a big misconception. You know, we've looked at all the South African industries and everywhere we look, you find even in a stagnant economy, within every industry, you find the winners, you find the losers. Some are gaining market share on the others. Some are looking into new adjacencies. Some are finding um, a new path to market. And, and those are typically the innovators and yes, they might be embracing a new technology to help them innovate, okay. but it's, it's happening across other areas as well. A great example is if you take uh, Checkers with 66. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the Woolworths, Pick and Pay, the other online, uh, the other retailers mm. had an online delivery service for at least a year or two. Mm. 
and they were struggling. Checkers sat back, they took the lessons, they looked at what's a better way to do something. They came to market and were almost an overnight success mm. out mm. of the blue. Yeah. So, you know, they don't have to be first, mm. but they did it better and they did it faster. So that was a great innovation in the way they, the way they came to market. There are other companies, if I think of Transaction Capital, mm. you know, they went into an adjacent industry, but it's at the same time complementary when they bought We Buy Cars mm. to find another route to growth. Mm. Um, there's any number. We've got a lot of disruptors and a lot of innovators in South Africa. And I think it's, it would be selling ourselves short not to, not to be open to this possibility and, and to see these companies. I can think of Discovery with their globally renowned Vitality platform. Mm. I can think of uh, Purple Group, mm. which is effectively like the Robin Hood of South Africa, disrupting yes. the, 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 the space. We've got um, uh, Capitec, mm. which has been a significant innovator in the financial services yes, industry. Yes, yes. You know, the list goes on. Mm. And where you find the innovators, you find the leaders. Even in mining, Sibania Stillwater, for example, yes, yes. has been incredibly innovative if you go back over the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. So the opportunities are plenty. And just in terms of, you know, what other things we look for in a company, mm -hmm. and this is something, again, that's universally applicable. Mm -hmm. You find a company with an innovative culture. Typically, okay. the good innovators have a culture of innovation. Mm -hmm. They have leadership that is open and, and encouraging of, of innovation. There's mm. funding available for new ideas. Yeah, yeah, there's engagement yeah. for new ideas mm. and they're open to new ideas. Mm. And they're not willing, and they're not uh, afraid to fail. You know, and they're not afraid to disrupt themselves. Okay. Or they're not afraid to look at a vertical or an adjacent growth path. You know, this, this kind of innovation happens in so many different places. Um, and I think we mustn't be blinded by the technology that's out there in the world today. And it is incredible and a tool for amazing innovation and disruption, but it is not alone the end goal. It's the company that uses it, how they use it, and that's where the real opportunity lies in finding the best investment ideas. You said something from your statement, Grant, that these companies are willing to self-disrupt. How, how do you view disruption? Because usually yeah. this seems to be a fast lane, where yeah. if, if you can't stay ahead, you, you're left behind. How do you view disruption? Well, it is a fast lane, Randani. The, the the roads are the streets of the stock market are littered with companies who fail to to see the disruption coming. And if you think of Kodak, mm. they invented the digital camera, mm. but they weren't willing to disrupt their own business. Mm. You think of um, Nokia, who weren't willing to disrupt their own smartphones. Mm. Motorola with smartphones. So, I think disruption is a real and present threat, and the threat is accelerating mm. along with the acceleration of new technologies. Yeah. And we believe the best defense against disruption is innovation. Okay. Continuous, ongoing innovation is the best way to navigate a strong path into the future for the companies that we invest in. Thank you, Grant. Do you, do you have anything you would just like to, to say lastly? Um, yeah, I think that's innovation. Thanks, Brindani. I think uh, innovation is a, a often under underappreciated um, characteristic of great companies. Okay. And I don't think one can look very far past good innovation to find a good company. And uh, that's, I think that's it from our side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Until next time, guys.